Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is another episode of Beyond Kicking and Punching with Sifu Alda Koskos and, of course, myself, Sunny Pabuaya. So let's just go straight to the point. Is Shaolin Kempo dying or is it fading out? So that's the big question of the day, but we're going to get Sifu Al to talk to our special guests and we'll take it from there. So again, let's give a big warm up applaud to Sifu Al de Cascos. Sifu, the floor is yours. Oh, rah, rah, rah. I'm here we go, guys. I'm having a very wonderful weekend. Or for you, some of you guys might be in the middle of the day. I don't know. But anyway, hey. A lot of questions going to be asking. Um, really great questions, matter of fact, because this questions has been going on for many, many years. And you know, basically, I, I enjoy asking questions. That's the only way that you you get a little bit more intelligent. But here goes the special guest we have today is Grandmaster Rob Castro, out of the Shaolin Temple System in San Francisco, and. You know, without saying too much, because we're going to be asking a lot of questions, let's go ahead and welcome him on to Beyond Kicking and Punching. And here we have Grandmaster Rob Castro. Hey, everybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go. Okay. Rob. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, let's just go ahead and just um, say Grandmaster Rob. Okay. That's your official title. Um a lot of questions come up throughout the years and you know we've been around for in the martial arts beyond half a century and uh <laughs> which which makes us all qualifying for red head or excuse me bald head and gray hair <laughs> right just like craft out there you know what i mean so so here we go rob uh how do you feel this uh today i'm i'm feeling great good fantastic Okay, great. You know, one of the questions uh, we have is just that, you know, there are some people that come in and out of the martial arts and sometimes they, they've been around for ages and people see them and then sometimes they, they, they people see you and then they don't see you for a few years and they come back again and there, there are those that in between that don't know who you are. So if, if I knew nothing about you, how would how would you explain who you are? Well, I would say uh, I'm the son of the creator of Shaolin Kempo, my father, uh, great grandmaster, Ralph Castro, who trained under uh, Professor Chow in Hawaii. And uh, once he left Hawaii and came to the mainland, the West Coast, he developed his system at the time was called Kempo Karate. Um, and I would say it was back uh, in 1958, I believe, is when my dad first opened up his school publicly um, in San Francisco. So the, as being the creator of his system, uh, he had seen quite a few people, uh, quite a few students, as well as black belts and so on, come through uh, the Shaolin Kempo. So there, our family consists of seven children. Um, I am third in line. Uh, I have my sister, April, my sister, May. Then comes myself, my sister, June, my brother, Boss. Then my sister, July. And last but not least, my sister, Mia. So seven involved in martial arts. We all started at a very, very, very young age. You say that you're 51? 51. And it was back in 58 that my dad started his school. Publicly. No, but I, you know, I'm, I'm getting confused because I'm, my hearing must have been gone bad. But did you say you were 31 or 61? 65. 65. All right, okay. I kind of mistook that in there. I mean, you look pretty good for 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 31 years old. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, no, <clears throat> that means you've been in the martial arts for so long, and and you did say that your 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 father, he was he was your first instructor, correct? First and only instructor, actually. 
Oh, okay. And uh, you talked about a little bit about your family, you know, all, all the accomplishments. Um, but, you know, I'm more familiar with June, you know. Um, she's an actress, isn't she? A, a, stunt, a, a stunt actress? She's done, that's her field that uh, it was something at a very young age that she obviously uh, was going towards um, being wanting to be in film. Um, so that's why she did move down to Southern California because obviously that's where it's all at. Um, mm -hmm. From there, she's made uh, quite a few connections with different people uh, and associated herself uh, with the uh, entertainment world as far as uh, movies and, and so on and so forth. So she's uh, the most successful in that in that point of putting herself out there. Um, she has a school with her husband uh, down there in the Pasadena area. So she's doing quite well, which is really good. I'm proud of her. Very mm. proud of her. Great. Your, uh, your father was pretty close to Bruce Lee. Can you tell us more about the relationship? Uh, him, Bruce Lee. Well, yes, he was. They were very close friends. Uh, we, as a family, really never looked at Bruce Lee as the uh, uh, you know a movie star or a star at all because he was more of a, a family member uh, as far as we felt uh, he was I mean there were times a lot of times when he would come into San Francisco visiting um, and he'd give my dad a call um, and they you know go out to lunch and my mom my grandfather in fact there was one time uh, when we were still in grammar school, um, there were times where my dad would uh, bring us lunch in the afternoon and he got a call from Bruce. Uh, he had been in town and he wanted to hook up with my dad. And my dad said, oh, sure, we can go to lunch. But first of all, I need to stop by uh, the kids' school to drop off their lunches. Uh, would you mind coming with me? Uh, because the kids are also telling their friends at school that they do know you because at that time Bruce was very popular with the Green Hornet, uh, Edo in the Green Hornet. So uh, Bruce said, oh sure, okay, I'll come, I'll come with you. So um, I remember being in, in class and it was close to lunchtime and there was a knock on the door um, and we went to a Catholic school in San Francisco, it was called St. Joseph's, and uh, our teacher, our nun, uh, went over to the door, opened the door, and there standing is Bruce Lee. Um, he actually came in, brought our lunches with my dad, and the kids, her fellow classmates at school, were just in awe, uh, because, you know, again, we had told them we knew who Bruce Lee was, and mm -hmm. they were in shock. So Bruce came in, made a little announcement, you know, just a little talking here and there to the kids and then left. Uh, and once he left, the kids were obviously running to the windows to look outside. And uh, our teacher actually had to ask Bruce to come back in to tell the kids to get back to their classes or to their seats so we can get back to uh, our learning in classes. But uh, yes, he was a very close friend of the family uh, and, uh, you know, again, we didn't look at him as the, you know, a movie star or big star that he was. He was just uh, an another person that was part of our family. And uh, we do miss him very much. You know, it's, um, you know, Wong Jack Man was in the area in San Francisco. And did your father ever discuss the, or talk to, to you or the, to your dad about the confrontation between Bruce Lee and Wong Jack Man? Um, you know, we had heard uh, of the confrontation, uh, and I believe my father was not there at the time. Um, again, there were uh, many times that Bruce was in town, and even myself, you know, where my dad would take me down uh, to Chinatown, and we'd go down into the basements of some of the, you know, uh, some of the masters there. And, and watch them work out and so on and so forth. But as far as uh, the confrontation itself, um, 
I have no recognition, uh, recognition of the incident uh, as far as my father's uh, part of it. Uh, and, you know, that's pretty much it. Mm, right. Why, um, why, why did your father change the name of the, his expression of uh, uh, Kenpo Karate to Shaolin Kenpo? Um, it was probably back um, in the early 80s when my dad uh, at the time was having the uh, California Karate Championships. Uh, him and Ed Parker um, were, do was, were doing that uh, particular tournament. And uh, my dad had invited Professor Chow to come to the uh, to San Francisco and to be a special guest and uh, to do a demo at the California Karate Championships. And at that time, uh, Professor Chow had come to the school and was watching, you know, the workouts and, and so on and so forth. And he had suggested to my dad, uh, because Kempo Karate being out there, uh, there were a lot of other schools uh, recognizing the, or stating they were of the Kempo system. And the majority of the Kempo uh, at that time uh, that was out there was of American Kempo Karate of the Ed Parker system. So uh, Professor Chow looked at it and had suggested to my father because of even though Ed Parker has his Kempo Karate system and you have yours, which was different, you should possibly change the name where he made the suggestion to change the name to Shaolin Kempo. So it will make a di distinction between the uh, Ed Parker system uh, of Kempo Karate and Ralph Castro system of Kempo Karate. He suggested that it was more towards, as far as movements were concerned, uh, Shaolin, which is where his father had uh, was an instructor or was trained. Um, so he, he suggested to calling it Shaolin Kempo. So that's where my dad took it from there. And uh, so they agreed with the professor and said, OK, uh, we'll change the name now to Shaolin Kempo. Well, you know, there's some schools out on the East Coast, they go by Shaolin Kempo and some of them go by Shaolin Kung Fu. And then you have your group, you know, Shaolin Kempo. Uh, what is the difference? I, I've seen that out there. And I've noticed even the spelling uh, alone, as far as the Shaolin Kempo, the Kempo part of it, you will notice uh, the Kempo is spelled with an M. Uh, mm -hmm. My understanding was more related to the Japanese system of the martial arts. Whereas the Kempo, K-E-N-P-O spelling was more towards the Chinese system. Um, so that's where we kept mm -hmm. the, as because our origin uh, is of the Chinese system, of the Chinese system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen, I seen a lot of it. You know, I travel a lot and I hear and see a lot of different uh, expressions or systems of Kempo. So, you know, it sometimes get pretty confusing. Uh, yeah, naturally, the punch is a punch, a kick is a kick, and, you know, and a yell is a yell. Um, but um, there are some systems that do the slap. Uh, can you explain to me what it meant? You know, when I talk about the slap, it's like, like you know, when they throw in a back punch and then, you know. Um, I have seen that in some of, some of the Kempo systems. Um, any type of slapping uh, that we practice would be either trapping the um, the person's attack, say a punch or whatever like that. Um, we don't, I mean, as far as we practicing, the slapping is not really part of our, our uh, training. I guess it would also give you the effect of what your um how would you say um how the strike would affect an, an individual i guess um maybe it's a sound effect of some kind to, to help <laughs> but, yeah. 
I know that the Filipino, when they do it, they call it gunting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, our hand, is, as far as it being up here and striking as we go through our motion, would be most of the time, you know, again, trapping uh, the individual's uh, attack, whether it be a grab or, um, or a punch or whatever that may be thrown at us. What is, a, what is the future of the, the Shaolin Temple now? What do you see? Where do you see it going? I mean, you know, we're all going <clears throat> someday, you know, and um, do you already have somebody that's going to be succeeding you? Or I, I know I don't like to talk about it, but I mean, that's reality, you know? Of course, yeah. Um, that thought actually hasn't come to mind yet. Um, you know, it's It's been two years since my father has passed. Um, and uh, with COVID coming, you know, coming into play, uh, things have kind of come to a stalemate. So actually last year, uh, I got together uh, with uh, my other siblings, my other sisters and my brother, and we talked about uh, it's time to bring Shaolin Kempo back into the limelight, bring it out there, get it exposed. And uh, that's where we started, or I've started to do a, um, on a regular basis every month, uh, second Saturday of every month, I have put together where we uh, open it up to the black belts of the Shaolin Kempo system uh, right now and to come and train. And just, it's 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 not a seminar, uh, but just basically uh, a workout. Coming together, those people who, it's been you know, a while, whether regardless whether they're still training, uh, practicing their Shaolin Kempo or just, you know, kicking back and, and want to get back into it, get some, or just uh, coming together and, and seeing one another. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, this is something that I've started to do and I'd like to eventually uh, push forward to start doing more seminars, getting uh, more more of our other association schools involved in uh, and, and, and bringing their, uh, their people uh, involved in their classes, uh, you know, expanding and getting them out there as well. My sister, uh, May and June, as well as July also have their own um, schools going. Um, and so they're spreading the art, keeping it alive in that sense. Hmm. You know, it's interesting how <clears throat> your, your sisters all have uh, names after months. How come you don't have one? <laughs> well, you know, it, you know, people do ask ask that question, and uh, it started w when my mom was pregnant with her first child. Um, they both decided, or felt, that they were having a boy. They had decided uh, that there was <laughs> no other way of them having anything else but a boy. So the only name they had in line was a boy's name and come April 1st my sister is born they're at the uh, hospital there and the doctor says congratulations Mr. And Mrs. Castro you have a girl <laughs> with the idea of my parents thinking they were having a boy they had no name and they came back and said, no, April Fool's, right? It's April Fool. And they go, no, the doctor said, you have a girl. So they had no name. And at that time, again, being the month of April, they said, well, you know what? Let's call her April. Second time around, again, <laughs> they were thinking, we are having a boy. And sure enough, come in May, my mom gives birth to another girl. So they decided, well, we'll continue it on since we have April, we'll continue with May. And then obviously I came in third. And again, they already had uh, the name uh, there. Uh, and I'm named after my dad's two brothers, my uncles, Roy and Robert. So my actual legal name is Roy Robert Castro, but I go mainly by Rob or Robert got my name and then they get it on with june july and then my sister mia oh huh. so and 
so you got R R Roy Ralph, and the girls got by the the the, the names of the months. So, you know, you got all these children. So we know that April is probably the oldest, right? Yes. And then it goes. Can you tell me the? I mean, I know some of the women just don't like to have the ages, you know, put out there in front of everybody. But if you're talking about age and the the you know the hierarchy, how how would it go down? And where are you in the line? I am third line. But again, uh, I mean, it, it's hard to believe that my mom. Uh, of only four feet nine, had seven children, and pretty much they were all one right after the other. Um, so we started with April, we went to May, myself, my sister June, my brother Boss, then my sister July, and then it was nine years, I guess my parents took a break for nine years, then my sister Mia was born. Wow. So that's, I mean, that, that I mean, I, I don't know how my mom did it with six kids, boom, one right after the other. Uh, and then nine years later, coming in with my uh, youngest uh, sister, Mia. Yeah, so I guess going to St. Joseph's, all Catholic, you know, and um, right, you know, you, <laughs> you just go ahead and pop it out that way. Congratulations <laughs> to your mom. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's what you call the the ultimate woman, you know, for being oh, out there. Yeah, so you got a real big family. She's the grandmaster in in that that sense, as far as uh, <laughs> raising the kids, you know. And uh, is, is your mom still still alive? Yes, she is. Yeah. Uh huh. And uh, all most of your uh, most of your family is all in uh, Northern California. Um, the majority of our family is in California. Um, I have a sister who just recently, uh, April, the oldest, who recently moved out to Nevada. She's in Reno, which is just not you know, too far, just on the other side. Uh, and then I have a, the youngest sister, my sister Mia. Uh, her and her family live out in Texas. And my brother, Paul, he's out there with you, uh, but he's in Maui. Really? So myself, three others are here in California. So your dad actually grew up in Hawaii, right? I'm sorry? Your dad grew up in Hawaii before? In Hawaii. Oahu. On Oahu, uh, he was from uh, on the country, Nanakuli, is where he's from. Man, that's a pretty rough place there, man, <laughs> Nanakuli. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, uh, so, a, a so lot that, of heavy fighter come out of there, you know. Uh, you know, he had to uh, he had to be able to take care of himself. Uh, he's actually started. Um, my grandfather, his father was a uh, boxer, and that's how right. my father started his training. He started uh, boxing, and then eventually got involved with uh, Professor Chow. And learning karate. Yeah. Well, Max Holloway comes out of the Nanakuli area. So, you know, we've got a lot of good people and fighters that come out of the Nanakuli area, West Side. You know, moving on, yeah. Um, a question is because what sets Shaolin Campo apart from other arts? Mm. Um, well, my dad took it uh, again. As a creator, all of his, um, of course, putting the art together, his um, instructions, he would say he, he got his learning through. I mean, obviously, Professor Chow um, uh, took him through his training well, but to develop his art, a lot of it came through his dreams, he said. Um, there was an uh, individual in his dreams, an older gentleman. Uh, that would take them through techniques and so on and so forth. And then my dad uh, would go from there. Um, he basically uh, looked at uh, Shaolin Kepo or developed the art as uh, a look and see, a look at what the public was looking for, um, especially if he was going to have this as a business, a full time business. He 
look at what the public was looking for in a sense of practical self-defense. So a lot of the strikes obviously are uh, like other arts, multiple strikes striking to vital spots of the body. Uh, we stress a lot of speed um, um, and combination of techniques. Hands and feet, um, we're, we're not strictly uh, dominating more towards the hands part of it or more towards the legs uh, as like in Taekwondo. Um, so it's, I would say 50-50 of uh, hands and feet as far as um, using as your weapons. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, you know, if uh, somebody wanted to come to your class, yeah, how how would these people join your classes? And, and your headquarters is in San Francisco, isn't it? Actually, um, when my dad retired, um, uh, the, the school, he um, had two students, uh, two brothers who were training with him or uh, at the time, who took over the school and my dad decided to retire. So there really is no as far as uh, instruction of the uh, Shaolin Kempo. I would say the closest uh, as far as a headquarters would be my sister's school in Antioch, California, where I do teach on a, a, a regular basis once a week. I work with the adult class. And obviously being um, the highest rank and the successor of the Shaolin Kip, I would probably consider that uh, more of headquarters of, uh, even though there is no so-called headquarters of the name Ralph Castro Shaolin Kempo as far as the school is concerned. Um, the instruction, mm -hmm. Um, uh, again, my sister's school is open in Antioch. I have a sister, July. She's down in Southern California in the Orange County, Tustin area. Um, and my sister, uh, June, out in Pasadena. Um, pretty much, I believe if you go to the website of the International Shaolin Kempo Association, you can click on uh, any uh, one of the association schools. Um, which we consider, we call that the circle of iron. And you can get connected there with other uh, of our associated schools of the Shaolin Kempo uh, for information as far as learning uh, Shaolin Kempo. You know, besides, let's, let's get into another area now, okay? Because we know you as a martial artist, you know? Um, what, what, what outside of the martial arts do you do? I mean, do you have a hobby or you work or, you know, are you just a house husband or? <laughs> I do work uh, full time. I work uh, at a car, uh, at a car dealership um, uh, in, the, in the service department, um, more uh, service and sales related. Um, and as a part time thing that I'd like to do is I just uh, two years ago recently uh, purchased myself a motorcycle uh, mm -hmm. ride. Uh, it had taken close to 40 years, you know, for me to obtain that. But, you know, like everything else, you know, you just, it takes time. You need to be patient. So I'll ride my bike, uh, go for rides. And I do enjoy fishing with my sons. Uh, every weekend, again, we'll just take some time off and just do some relaxing uh, around our area here. Um, and that's pretty much it. Just to take them back and relax, going like that way. You've met many famous martial arts uh, individuals. What quality stands out to you the most and that you admire? Wow. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I. I've seen a number of these martial artists from the very beginning stages. Um, you know, obviously, uh, it, 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 you see them grow, you see them uh, move from different levels and then and continue on either um, with their art or taking other avenues. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, 
there was a time myself where uh, I wanted to possibly get into uh, film as well, but then other uh, things changed uh, in my life, so it didn't happen. But um, people such as uh, I remember, you know, Chuck Norris competing um, uh, at the California Karate Championships as well as the international. I mean, again, Bruce Lee. Uh, being there at the internationals, um, putting on his demo. In fact, that was the same year I performed as well uh, at the uh, international karate championships. But um, it, it is interesting to see how the art has changed, um, how people adjust. Um, uh, you know, and and again, the the fact that years ago martial arts was a hush hush quiet thing it was only taught by people uh, close either a family member uh you would learn it it was taught in garages um and living rooms um so it was a close very close-knit uh, uh, type of situation and now when you look at it uh martial arts has exploded to uh you know just you can just walk down the street and you'll see a school there and uh, another school down the other street but it, it's it's something that uh, I think uh, is is really good because not only does it uh, teach you the idea of self-defense uh, you know people can take it uh, for training purposes uh, for the art if they want to learn a particular art uh, to expand and to even uh, if they want to take it even further to have their own school uh, you know, there's different uh, avenues that people can get into in the, in the martial arts, and uh, it's just like you know, the kids with soccer. You know, there's a uh, that's probably you know the, the number one thing that most kids uh, get involved in, or baseball or football. It starts from there, and then grows, uh, and they can go from there and, and, and expand what they want to do. Has um has mixed martial arts affected your school in any way, positive or negative? Um, no, it hasn't. In fact, uh, at my sister's school, um, her son um, teaches grappling as well. They have that as an extracurricular or actual uh, extra uh, added uh, part of their training. Um, you know, it, it, it's it's all out there. Every every art has something to offer. Um, and you got to be able to have open mind and be flexible with that. Um, the the um, if if you look at I think the the very first stages of mixed martial arts when it was the ultimate uh, ultimate fighter, uh, there was obviously a particular um, art that dominated that, um, and. Now, if you look at it from back then, things have changed because other people have learned how to work against those different individuals uh, or that particular style. Again, they've made their adjustments and them themselves have made adjustments to not be just into the grappling or uh, any of that. They have to do the stand up type of fighting. So art takes from the other. Uh, and helps one another in that sense is w uh, what I feel uh, uh, as far as uh, mixed martial arts is concerned. Have you ever not have the opportunity or had the opportunity to use martial arts? Um, you know, for all the years that I have been involved, I mean, again, there's going to be a confrontation. Um, I have physically or basically never had to use my martial arts. Um, obviously knowing what you can do and uh, you know you you really have to think about it. Uh, your situation, uh, being aware of this, your surroundings obviously uh, is a part of it. Um, I've come close to just having a confrontation since you know somebody cuts you off um, or parking space, you know, I mean, everybody comes into that situation and, you know, two people, you know, they get out and, 
and you know, you, you face off in a sense. I've had an individual come towards me and go to shove me, uh, put their hands up to push me back. And I just simply had to just knock their hands away. And just by that reaction was enough. The individual realized, whoa, wait a minute. Maybe I shouldn't go that way. And we walked away and we went on our own. And again, you know, uh, when you really look at the situation, is it really worth it? Um, to, because you never know what could happen. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you never know. Somebody might come out and just pull out that equalizer and boom, that's it. You know, so um, again, I, we like to teach and, and I'm sure in all martial arts is the best defense is just to avoid it. Uh, you have nothing to prove, nothing at all. Um, yes, there's maybe a situation where you have no choice. And then that's when you, you know, take care of the situation. We've had a number of students who have had to have the experience um, of having to defend themselves. Uh, my sisters as well, they have, they have had confrontations uh, because they're being so small and petite in their size, you know, somebody thinks, you know, they, they can uh, overpower them or whatever. And then they find out it's, you know, a surprise that someone as small or as little as them can take care of themselves in that situation. So Dynamite in small packages. Wow. A lot of things we've learned about you and, you know, we're coming to the end time right now. What words of inspiration or wisdoms could you give our audience? Okay. Um, I would say, uh, well, the inspiration I get is from my students um, or anyone I'm instructing. Um, I, I do find that once you, if you're instructing or you're, you're working with an individual and they're struggling at uh, maybe a certain technique or just the application of the technique um, and you, you've got to just look at other areas of how to get your point across for them to understand what it is that you want them to accomplish um, in a technique or in a strike or whatever. So I've got to, I constantly are I'm looking at different ways. Uh, a lot of it I've looked at through my, through my instructions or through my teachings was I looked back at my father, how he put uh, things across, made it as simple as possible. Uh, and I've tried to use those concepts and all of that, but then you still find there are certain individuals who are still struggling at it. So you've got to change it a little bit, uh, make a little adjustment, try to make it a little more clear to them uh, how to, so they will understand it. And then you can see it when they do. It's like a light bulb in their head, all of a sudden, ah, I got it. That to me is a big inspiration because I've now crossed over to that point where the individual has now understood the technique or the art a little more uh, and has a little bit more understanding of it. Wow, that's great. Ralph, so Junior or Rob, Grandmaster, <clears throat> Um, it's been an enlightening evening uh, and day spending with you, and um, I really enjoyed it. And I'm, I know that our audience will do too. And uh, you know, and you know, it, it kind of leaves me speechless. You know, just hearing people grow and seeing them bloom out. And you certainly have your family also. You know, June, April, May. You know, all of them coming along real well. And hopefully they will continue on with their children. And that's that's life. You know, life keeps on going on. Um, so I thank you very much for joining us in this in this uh, uh, Beyond Kicking and Punching. And um, um, I'd like to turn it over to Sonny. And Sonny, you might have some last words uh, yeah. to say. Uh, and take it from there, Sonny. Well, thank you, Sifu. Well... Thank, thank, thank you, Sifu. Uh, it, it's been a while since we have seen each other. I remember years ago, uh, 
we were there side by side competing against one another as well. But uh, it, it is good to see you. You're looking really great. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to do this yep. interview. So yep. welcome. So welcome. Yeah. Sunny? Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you very much, Grandmaster Rob, uh, for doing this interview. And I, I'm also thankful for my good friend, John Kraft, who actually introduced me to you so that we can actually get you and Sifu Al reassociated and reconnected. John, can you just say hi for a second? Hey, guys. <laughs> yeah. There's hi, Sifu Al. Oh, awesome to meet you. <laughs> uh, John was the one who uh, put uh, the uh, this iron circle or the I mean the thing on Facebook for what is it John again the Shaolin Kempo Association yes it's we have a school we've had since 93 called Pacific Shaolin Kempo and that in the next year we joined the international Shell and Kempo Association and got on the Circle of Iron. Yes. Yep, that's right. So again, thank you, John, for uh, joining. You're welcome. Also introducing us to Grandmaster Rob. And as a final word, uh, again, thank you, sir, for uh, doing this interview with Sifu Well. And when you mentioned your sister, I actually when we talked about a couple of days ago, I was looking through my basement and look what I found, sir. I found <laughs> June's video, it's a VHS, because I remember actually watching her and doing movies as well as uh, I actually got this because it was a, a gift from one of my students saying, you know, you should check this girl out for women's self-defense because she's awesome. And the story you, you are saying about, you know, being dynamite little little ladies and don't mess with them. That's right. I, I definitely remember that. So again, thank you very much for doing the interview. Uh, keep up the great work. Also, anybody who's interested or wanting uh, to have Grandmaster uh, Rob Castro to do a seminar. I know that he's also available. He's actually going to be at Salt Lake City with Sifu Wild de Costcos and Sam Elias in Salt Lake City for uh, the seminars coming up in April. So again, if you're interested, message John, Grandmaster Rob, or myself or Sifu Wild about the information on that seminar. So thank you very much, sir. And also again, if anybody's interested, Sifu Al Dacascos has Dacascos Martial Art uh, dot com where he's selling uh, his videos of One Hub Kindle and DTS. Also, if you want to go on Amazon, he has his book Legacy uh, also for sale. So again, if you haven't subscribed yet, or if you haven't commented, comment where you're from so that this way Sifu Wow can say hello on the comments section as well for this channel. So thank you guys. Mahalo. And we'll see you guys again soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.